Get that dream out of your head and put it into reality and do it with Squarespace. They make it easier than ever to launch that passion project. Do you want to showcase your work or sell products of any kind? Now is the time with beautiful templates and the ability to customize just about anything. You can easily make a beautiful website by yourself, but if you get stuck... It happens. They have 24-7 award-winning customer support that is there to help you out. So head to squarespace.com slash grace for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code grace to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Not, not too deep. Hello and welcome to another episode of Not Too Deep. I'm your host, Grace Helbig. Very exciting episode with the one and only Margaret Cho, comedian, activist, dog lover, sous vide expert. Uh, as I found out this episode, you'll learn a lot about it. We also get to hear about uh, her career uh, and she gives some really, really great tips on uh, turning your life around. If you find yourself in a hard time or in any sort of struggle, she is just so charming, just so lovely. Enjoy this episode of Not Too Deep with Margaret Cho. <laughs> Margaret, thank you for being here. This is very exciting. Thank you. Thank you. You look very um, cool and comfortable. Thank you. I have my um, <gasps> friend here. Oh, thank you for bringing it. Lu- Lucia? Lucia. Uh, I was going to start by saying thank you for the Lucia Instagram content because <laughs> there's something so calming about it that it's very, very necessary and lovely. So thank you. She's really incredible, and um, she's just amazing, especially during these uncertain times, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and she's just been in an amazing present, especially when I wear lipstick, she really loves, she wants to get at this lipstick. (laughs) How long have you had Lucia? She's, I've had her for a year and um, (sighs) a year and eight months. She's about a year and... uh, She's about a year and 11 months. So okay. no, no, yeah, but yeah, she's almost, yeah, a year and 11 months, something like that. Wow. But uh, she's great. She's so, so sweet. Yeah. Uh, has she formed an even more intense bond with you over the last few months? I think so. Well, we always traveled together anyway. Yeah. And uh, she's kind of like a marsupial because she wears like she wears uh, herself in a little pouch around my neck. So she's oh. always in this like stomach pouch. <laughs> and um, so lately uh, I've been trying to get her out of the habit of it um, only just because I thought, oh, well, why don't you just try to sit in my lap? But she just will get inside my shirt too. <laughs> So, you know, if I don't have the pouch, she'll put herself in my shirt. Yeah. And um, so that works too. So, but I have to wear a, like a loose fitting shirt. She'll like, um, she, she got in the habit of it uh, when I had um, like a night dress on and then she would get <laughs> in on the, under the shirt night dress and she would get on my back. Yeah. And then oh. so I would put her in the, in the front. Um, uh, so I could sort of be like more in in a way aware of her. <laughs> she's, she's the best. Oh, it's so so sweet. Did you? How did you? Uh, how did you guys come together? She's from the uh, Michelson's Found Animal Rescue. She was rescued from a kill shelter with her mm. entire litter, wow. and uh, she. Um, my friend works at uh, Re- Animal Rescue, and. Um, so they alerted me about this uh, litter that was coming in. Mm-hmm. And um, so her whole uh, litter got rescued and the mom got um, rescued. Like the mom got adopted first. Wow. And so she has the same, like her mom and her siblings all look exactly the same, but they're <gasps> all different colors. Oh, cute. And they're all about the same size. It's funny because her mom has like, but her mom looks like she's wearing like husky makeup. <laughs> yeah like she's dressed up as a husky for halloween like she's got like the husky eyebrows and <laughs> um you know just like she did husky drag yeah, and yeah, then yeah. her um brothers are like kind of have like sort of dalmatian brown coloring and um like brown spotted and then her sister is uh white but with a black nose and oh. black eyes and she has like kind of um 
brown, hazelish green eyes and a chocolate, milk chocolate nose, like a uh, milk tea nose. Uh, I think it's like milk tea and boba coloring. She's kind of cappuccino. She's, uh, the, I mean, everything about her is a very like calming aura. Mm-hmm. And she has kind of a rose tea, uh, kind of milky undertone. So she's kind of, I guess she's like a fall autumn yeah, yeah, um, yeah. palette. Yeah. And she has like kind of ballet pink ears. And yeah, she's just a very calming. Um, she's kind of mad at me lately because I've been brushing her teeth, which oh. she hates. Really? Okay. But you've taken the step to actually get in there with a toothbrush. Yeah, it was hard because she's such a small mouth. So I've had to like go through several toothbrushes to find the right size. And (laughs) we do it like the last thing at night. She gets her toothbrush at the very, because she's tired. So it's easy for me to get in there when she's sort of not expecting it. (laughs) So I get in there really, really late at night and I brush her teeth and she's like so mad. And then she wakes up and she's like, ah. (laughs) Like she gets really mad when I do it. But at the very end, then I give her chicken toothpaste because I can't really brush her teeth when there's toothpaste on it. Yeah, but yeah. I give her the toothpaste at the end as like a treat. So she knows like to expect like a treat at the end. That it's worth so, it. Yeah. So it's like chicken whipped cream. Kind oh, of okay. I didn't, know that, I didn't know that that kind of stuff existed, but that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it's, it's got like a chicken flavor. Okay. So uh, but it's kind of got a whipped cream kind of like, well, it's more like a, a bear blanc. And <laughs> it's, it's more like a... <laughs> okay. And it does clean the teeth. It does clean the teeth. And um, it has some sort of like, you know, abrasive agents in it, but it has mm. a chicken flavor and it's good for them. Huh. Oh, so I wonder... she, and she likes it. That's great. I mean, that makes me wonder why we haven't in the human world, like taken risks in like a savory toothbrush or toothpaste scenario. <laughs> I know. Why don't we have like a butter a toothpaste yeah, or like a, yeah. a sour cream toothpaste? I don't know. They always say like if you can't brush your teeth, you should eat like a piece of cheddar cheese. But that's probably like the best thing. Oh, really? Um, I've never heard that. Um, yeah, it's supposed to like somehow be um, a coating for the teeth that's somehow better than a, like a, the worst environment for your teeth is like um, sugar. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Or I think an acid. Like an okay. orange juice thing is like the worst thing you can right. do. Right, right, but the right. best thing is like a um, some kind of a uh, like a, a um, I guess a cheddar cheese. So they should have like a cheddar cheese, like a bacon cheddar. Oh. Um, cheese. <laughs> I didn't know I would get so much knowledge about uh, hygiene, yeah. dental hygiene for dogs <laughs> immediately. Thank you. Of course, of course. Um, now, Margaret, you've had this uh, bonkers career, and I, I think it's so wildly impressive um, the the trajectory of your career in terms of like being someone involved in the entertainment industry for so long, because it feels like, you know, the entertainment industry is very draining and very exhausting. And you found this way to like stay very true to yourself and kind of navigate it, which is I think so, so freaking cool, um, especially with, you know, technology and everything kind of evolving and all of that. Uh, you must be exhausted. At this <laughs> point. But uh, I want to talk to you about a couple of things. One, the most recent situation of The Masked Singer, uh, in which you sang as the poodle on this program. <laughs> How was that experience? Because it seems very wild to have an entire studio audience screaming, take it off to you (laughs) at the end of singing a song. (laughs) It was so fun. I really had a great time um, doing it. It's such a weird thing to do um, a show where uh, you're singing and so much of um, entertainment really is about context and Mm -hmm. who you are in relationship to an audience and how they know you. And um, so it's strange to kind of go on to something where they know you're supposed to be famous and they know that you're supposed to be um, talented. You should should be. (laughs) Right, right. And they should know you from something, but they don't exactly know. And it's such a weird thing. Um, So I guess that it's kind of like, yeah, meta show business. And that Mm -hmm. it's like, how do we know you? Why do we know you? And what is this supposed to be? And 
So it's interesting. Um, it's a Korean invention. That yeah, show. that's it's, so it's, a, it's been adopted over here. Was that strange to be doing the American version of it? Yes, because um, I'm also very into Korean entertainment. I'm like mm -hmm. very crazy about um, Korean drama and K-pop. And so, um, you know, and I am Korean. So it's a very interesting thing to be. I mean, we hadn't we haven't adopted as much Korean variety programming. So mm -hmm. it's it's great that that show is such a big hit here. Um, so it's a it's an uh, it's a great adaptation. Yeah. And I think it's also great for us as a as a country, just because all of our entertainment and all of our everything about America is so divisive. Yeah. You know, like everything that we do is like it's us against them. Mm -hmm. And that show, no matter who you are um, politically, socially, where you stand, uh, even on masks. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody yes. likes it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I never put that together. That is very true. It does. Uh, it does uh, take that boundary away for people. Uh, yeah. That's people very, love it, it. So it's funny. It must have been nice to also to be involved with something where you ne didn't necessarily have to uh, talk politics, that it was just exactly yeah. what it was. Yeah, which is cool. And also, you know, the, that kind of thing of like where it's it's a I like I like a big shiny floor. They call them like those <laughs> shiny floor shows where yeah, it's yeah. really it's very old school entertainment where they don't even approach any kind of um, thing like where it's also not very um, much about like where they don't know when they're going to air it. So they they don't necessarily it could be live or it right. could be not rooted in the moment. Mm -hmm. And so they can sort of like hold it for a long time or they could just like play it right then or it's because they have to do so much um, sort of secrecy with that program and that they don't want anybody in the audience to leak out who it is. So they, right. they do so much like subterfuge where you're like being hidden from the, the audience. You're being hidden from the other players. You're being hidden wow. from the judges. You're being hidden from even like, um, when you go with the people that you're, you're usually traveling with, whether it's like your manager, or your agent, or your publicist, mm -hmm. or those people are also in masks. Wow, I which never, is really funny. Yeah, <laughs> I guess that makes sense because if someone knows who your agent or manager is, they can probably figure out that you're there. Yeah, because so many people have their, you know, their team is made up of their family members mm -hmm. and their friends, and everybody knows who's your crew. Right, you right, know? right, right. So you're going to know, like, as soon as you see somebody that you're uh, hanging out with, they're going to know who you're you're with. Like, so totally. that's like kind of part of the um, game. It, and then also, like, anytime you go to like a rehearsal space, you're there um, totally isolated. So they're taking us to different places that are like not around the other people that are on the show. Mm -hmm. And then if you're in a situation with the other people that are contestants, the other masked singers, they're not in their costume. Oh. So they have like other actors in the costume. So you don't have a chance to talk to the people because, you know, we'll talk to them. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go, who's in there? I right. think, I'm straight up going to go take it off. I, got the mask. <laughs> and I, I was like... <laughs> But Tommy Chong walked by me and I smelled weed and I'm like, oh, that's fucking Tommy Chong. Because yeah. I know him from life. Yeah. So I was like, because I've recorded a song with him before. So I was like, oh, that's Tommy Chong. Because I totally smelled his weed. Too. Yeah, yeah. You know exactly what strand I it know was. That his was strain. <laughs> so I was like, oh, it's Tommy Chong. Because it's like, you're, it's unmistakable his strain. So I was yeah. like, oh, it's fucking Tommy Chong. Because it was like, that's Tommy Chong. And it was so funny because it's I knew it. And it was just, you could just tell. So that it's, was really funny. It's, it's also funny how heightened all of your other senses for like mm -hmm. deductive reasoning come into play when yeah. you're trying to figure this thing out. Yeah. Well, it's also cool too, because it does combine something that you are really passionate about, which is music. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that's, uh, how did you, how did you get into music? Was music before comedy? Were they kind of at the same time or was one leading into the other? Well, my mother is a singer and my father um, is a piano player. And that's mm. how they met. Um, my mother sang uh, in the church choir and my father played piano in different churches all over 
Korea. So they okay. met in the sort of music like church circuit mm-hmm. in in Korea. And so um, and then when I was really young, I was in a small band of uh, singers like I was about five and I was mm-hmm. singing in this like choir of little girl Asian singers. And then we were like singing in these like little like public television shows in San Francisco. And then I got fired because I kept waving. I couldn't stop waving at my mom. (laughs) And I was like scared. And I was like, my nervous tick would be like waving at my mom from the, from like in the audience from the stage. And I was like, uh, and crying and stuff and so like i was like, kicked out because i was like so like immature Aww. and i couldn't separate myself from like the that sort of thing of like just not i wouldn't stop and i couldn't get into performance mode so i was like kicked out of the band and so that sort of was like my entry into it and then i played piano um as a really young kid and i started guitar like very young but i i, I so i originally started as a piano player and then it was like very much, I think, um, always part of like, you know, when you're Korean, you always are encouraged to play, but it's sort of like they either push you towards a life as a um, sort of classical pianist or cellist, or, you know, you're, you're pushed towards a classical music and you have to be the best uh. or you're discouraged yeah you know a, like if you're not bit of pressure. if you don't show promise as like yeah if you're not if you're not a virtuoso if you're yeah. not like in the top point one per one 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 percent whatever they say don't do it just quit wow, <laughs> wow. so it's kind of like if you're not going to be the best you're you know if you're not first you're last that kind of mentality Jeez. which yeah. is i think everything you know mm-hmm. yeah, so I mean, it was yeah. really hard yeah, that sounds very difficult and also a slight training for, I guess, Hollywood in some regard. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. It's the same thing. Yeah. Well, you've also, so you, you're doing your podcast now and I've been like doing some internet stalking of you and it seems like you're, you're really busy in terms of like maintaining conversations with people. Cause I know right time right now, it's a little bit difficult and interesting for comedians to kind of navigate, you know, the world right now and how to figure out this new adapt to performing in different regards like how have you kind of navigated the last few months in terms of like staying in entertainment creating things getting out there that sort of thing it's weird it's very much like trying to stay connected through um yeah podcasting um Mm -hmm. i'm doing some um work on indie film and doing some um Step well. There's some like voiceover things. Um, anything that's kind of not. Uh, I mean, going. I've gone into some bubbles to do some things which are very intense because you're like in the bubble, like you're you're testing to go in the bubble, and then you're like going in. It's that's wow. crazy to me, and that's really hard. Um, but I've done like some animation stuff. Like I have a movie coming out um, in really soon called Over the Moon. Oh yeah, the which new Netflix. Is, um, yeah yeah which is beautiful um so that's great you know um but there's like some stuff that is just like you know uh, i i i want to happen but you just have to wait like right. a comedy a stand-up comedy is is really hard on zoom yeah yeah it's really hard on instagram live i mean i love doing it i love doing stand-up comedy it's very challenging on these um platforms so yeah um i haven't done a drive-in show yet i would love to Mm -hmm. that would be great so we'll see um but i really miss doing comedy that's really the hardest thing i mean especially you know like everyone says especially right now i feel like it's uh both extremely necessary for comedians to be able to be performing and also um really daunting Uh, there's a lot going on and like how do you you've always been a very uh true to yourself outspoken creative how do you manage wanting to talk about everything that's happening in the world versus like wanting to kind of process everything that's happening in the world well i've been doing like um Right now, I just started to help um, out with the um, 
Biden-Harris campaign, oh, cool. which is really great. Um, so I'll be working on that um, for uh, the next, whatever, 40-something days until, yeah. which everybody's like so worried about, which I get, but mm-hmm. it's enough time. Yeah. It's enough time. We have enough time. Plus we have the last four years to look back on, like, look at how much he's fucked up. Yeah, I mean it's it's <laughs> it's undeniable, and it's um it it boggles my mind that there are still humans that refuse to acknowledge uh, some of mm. it because that to me takes way more emotional energy to like deny what's happening than to just like admit that your alliances are very wrong. <laughs> well, the insanity of it, and it's like the um also the goal yeah yeah to just sort of keep and maintain that position and the the um ridiculous idea that that's not going to completely destroy our democracy you know that's yeah. that's the problem is that it's not just going to mess up the next four years this is going to mess up the last 200 and 25 yeah. <laughs> whatever yeah. 230 240 i mean you know we're really we're really in a dangerous position i mean it's very terrifying so yeah. it's it is really wild but it's very cool to to see and hear that you're lending as much support as you can to, to get things going do you have because i know myself included a lot of people are just like what is what can I do? Like, what's something that I can like focus on? Like, do you have any tips or advice or suggestions for people in those terms? Because I think it's really easy to get very overwhelmed by like the grand the grand scale of everything rather than like focusing on the smaller, more accomplishable tasks. I think it it is just supporting um, the people that we want to support and supporting the messages of people that we want to support and just getting behind it and getting mm-hmm. excited about these small victories. You know, to me, like yeah. these small victories are, are, are important. Like I, I really get around things like um, pr- promoting the idea of um, let's end systemic racism. Let's look towards change. Let's look towards um this idea of prison reform. Like I was excited Mm -hmm. that um, Gavin Newsom signed this bill that's going to allow um, people in who are incarcerated, who are fighting the California wildfires to become firefighters when they get out of prison, which I think is really important. So I think that's really great. So I've I've been a big fan of Gavin Newsom since he was mayor of San Francisco and he's Mm -hmm. a friend of mine. And so, you know, I'm, I'm really thrilled that he's changing things around for people in California. And, you know, wildfires here are really a problem because of climate change. Yeah. And, you know, the, the Bobcat wildfire is really, it's right by our house. Actually, Lucia was coughing (gasps) the other day when the wildfires started because it's the smoke is in our air, you know, and they're in her little, little tiny, little Uh, milky tea lungs. uh, So it's really sad. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's when really you see sad. it affecting, like actually affecting, I, I mean, I've seen the photos from up in San Francisco and I, I, they look out of a movie, like they don't yeah. look real and it's yeah. hard to process because your brain tries to create like a distance of like, that's not possible. It's not happening, but yeah. it really is. Um, it is. Oh, well, okay. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, when we get back, I have a bunch more questions for you. So we'll be right back with more Not Too Deep. No. Not- It is the time for you to turn your dream into a reality, and guess who's here to help you do it? Squarespace. They make it easier than ever to launch that passion project that you got rattling around in your brain cage. If you're looking to start a new business, if you want to showcase some work or publish content, sell products, or more... Squarespace is the tool for you. They have beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything in a few clicks so you can easily make a beautiful website all on your own. They also have powerful e-commerce functionality that lets you sell anything online and analytics that help you grow your site in real time. And everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box. There's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is simple and you can get the help you need with their 24-7 award-winning customer support. 
Squarespace empowers millions of people, designers, lawyers, artists, gamers, restaurants, gyms, to turn great ideas into something real. So head to squarespace.com slash grace for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code grace to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash grace, offer code grace. I kind of joke with my boyfriend now, but it is also something serious of like, should we have more of a plan? Should we have more of like uh, things like cans of food and water and uh, more of an actual sort of like backup situation for ourselves? Do you have anything like that? Um, No, but like when I uh, with um, my the guy that I've go out with we what we're going to like some of the um protests you know yeah and we're like is there going to be tear gas should we bring milk yeah and we only have like we're non-dairy so we should we but we have almond milk <laughs> does that work for tear gas i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, like this is the most what? insane question i'm legitimately asking myself right now i know uh, it's like what do vegans do for tear gas <laughs> <laughs> It's like really hard to figure that out. It's like, hmm, you know, true, but it's very, very true. Very real. Yeah. Um, well, in you, you are vegan. Uh, yeah. Not really, but we're not, we're just not, we're just not, we're trying not to do too much dairy. Yeah. <laughs> no, that makes, that makes sense. Uh, in the, in the last, you know, few months, have you noticed any of, uh, or have you developed any really healthy habits or any really awful habits? Um, neither really healthy or awful. Although now I'm, I'm cooking on the high end and low end of the temperature scale. So I either do, um, I cook at either, uh, a hundred and, uh, 50 degrees or at 500 degrees. Whoa. What is this? I sous vide first oh and then i uh blaze at so i i do the sous vide depending on what it is Uh so i'll sous vide for uh, sometimes 24 to 48 hours and then i'll blast it either on the um weber outside or the uh broiler inside whoa i don't have a i don't have a flamethrower a, a torch <laughs> wait um, so what what kind of cooking is this it's sous vide is um it's under uh it's a water bath right it's like so vacuum sealed vacuum seal it and then you put it into a water bath for um you know depends on what it is mm-hmm. if vegetables you would do like 160 to 184 degrees depending on how hard it is how much water there is in it okay and then um meats you would do um it if there's like a bone in it um or how much conductivity or how much fat or connective tissues in it it depends on what it is okay um so uh in general i think um yeah meats i would do because if it's like got a lot of connective tissue i would break it down for like Mm -hmm. 24 hours or 48 if it's like really hard if it's like um an oxtail or something i would do like 48 hours whoa how long have you been cooking this way um for about for since march whoa cool so yeah it's been good it's been really it's been really interesting because i can sort of really see how um it's been very uh creative and it's been Mm. a way to kind of look to food as like at least becoming a little bit more interesting yeah than just like broiling a chicken breast or yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the imp- <laughs> like? Know? What was the impetus that got you into this? I've always enjoyed cooking, but I've never had time. Mm-hmm. So this is like a way to utilize the time. And like Korean cooking is all about fermentation. Okay. And you know, spending like several uh, days on a dish where you would like take it and put it outside in these clay pots, and it's about the seasons and about mm. drying and fermenting um, vegetables and 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 beans and using these flavors and using the seasons to cultivate these flavors and you know certain seasons like you would uh bring forth flavors like certain seasons bring forth certain fish and fruit and vegetables and you know those kinds of things are really inherent to the korean palate and so i thought well let's try i don't do that that much but i definitely was like into like oh let's try to see if we can do it with the, the technology we have around sous vide and i have a chef's kitchen cool. so i'm gonna actually like 
I just had it remodeled like two years ago, but I've never used it. I used to use like nice. my stove as a clock. So now I'm just <laughs> yeah, actually yeah. like use it. <laughs> now it's nice. it. it turns out it has a couple other functions that you can yeah. use it for. It's really beautiful. And I have a steam, I have a steam oven too. Um, so that's been helpful for like, um, you know, uh, seafood and, and lobster cool. and crabs and things like that, you know, so that's beautiful as well. Yeah, no, that's really cool to actually like explore the like a different style of cooking and actually kind of like yeah. appreciate the process of it. Yeah, I mean, but sous vide is really marvelous because I always like uh, burn things that like especially like steak, like really yeah. nice, beautiful, like a wagyu steak. Like I always fuck it up. Yeah, same. Like a beautiful, like a dry age steak, like a a really like nice steak. I all I want to make it like medium rare, and I mm-hmm. always fuck it up. Like it's always like burnt yeah. or like bloody raw, like wrong. Uh-huh. And so what I do is I cook it for two hours, and in in the sous vide, and like cook it all the way through, but it's like still red in the center, and then mm. I just blaze the outside for like a minute, and so it's like got a hard crust. And it's cooked all the way through, but it's still got a cool red center, but it's cooked. So it's like, you know, you just make it perfectly to your liking and then blaze the outside. So Uh, I got to try this. It's what they do in restaurants. Yeah, Yeah, it's what they do in restaurants. I've seen it done on Top Chef, uh, but it just looks like this insane magic trick that I couldn't possibly do on my own. So I'm happy (laughs) and inspired to hear that you're you're doing it. It sounds like it's working really well. It's so smart. I mean, Thomas Keller uh, said that. I mean, Thomas Keller is so smart. And he mm-hmm. said in his book, that like, if you get a sous vide and you really start working with it, I think it, it's, it, it's, it's really smart. He said that you um, would use it more than your microwave. And it's true. Wow, really? I actually do. I do use the sous vide every day. And huh. I find that it's much easier because like, I'll like vacuum seal something and I'll, I'll just throw it in the sous vide in the morning and then I'll have something that night or, you know, I'll just, and I'll use like the plastic bags, I'll just rinse out and I'll use them again. Oh, okay. Unless it's chicken or something, then I won't use them again. But it's like, you know, very much like, I, I mean, I, I'm really conscious about the use of like, that's the one thing that bothers me is the use of plastic, but I, right. I will like use it again. So it's kind cool. of, um it's been efficient. That's really cool. And also like everyone went through their big bread making phase of quarantine. I feel like bring on the sous vide phase of quarantine right now. It's good. <laughs> it works. Um, have you had a frequent house guest in uh, the quarantine situation? Um, I have uh, been seeing a guy who my oat milk friend. Okay. Um, he, my my protest friend. Okay. Um, other than that, um, that's it. Keep, keeping it low key. No, I have. So I, the one thing that I truly, truly admire about you so much is how open you've been about your whole life story and how transparent you've been. And it just, it seems very, very cool to be able to present sort of, uh, with humility your life and let people relate to it in whatever way they can or or will uh do you feel pressure to be so transparent online or to be voicing your opinions because i'm sure you know like every person especially a comedian especially female that tries to say something about anything going on in the world people want to shoot you down and tell you to shut up and etc like how do you balance that Oh, well, I don't care. I mean, I don't really care. Like to me, it's also (laughs) like, I'm I'm also very much like, I'm always trying to make jokes. So it's like, whatever I can mine as a subject for jokes, I'm Mm -hmm. much more desperate to do that than I am (laughs) to worry about opinions about what people might think. So I'm so like hungry to like have subjects to talk about, like, because you're just constantly burning through like material in every context, like I always need to like have jokes to write about and like something to write about, like something. Mm -hmm. So it's way more essential for me to like take that sort of idea of privacy and throw that out the window. Like, cause it's also who cares? Like, it doesn't matter. Very true. It really doesn't. So I need, I need to talk about whatever I can talk about in order to have something to talk about. Totally. Like what's your, do you have a process for writing jokes? Are you just sort of kind of open and conversational and like sort of filtering through things and making note of things that like sound more interesting to kind of 
experiment with? Yeah. I mean, I also like try to think about like, what do I like to hear about? Mm, And like, mm -hmm. what do I like to say to people? And what do I think is funny? And like, Mm -hmm. what do I like to tell people about myself? And then just sort of extend that into what is interesting to like tell an audience, you know, as an, an audience is really just an extension of friendships and like, um, so, you know, it's just an audience, it's just people. So it's, it's more just, um, presenting yourself as a friend to, um, a group of people as opposed to just one other person. So it, it, it's really just that, you know, um, that that's, that's the only process that I have. And it's just trying to remember and, and trying to record that. And, and so it's, it's like a, a process of doing that over and over, but that's why being on stage is so important because it's a, it's a constant thing. And then when you're not doing that, it's really hard to figure out even who you are as a person. Cause it's yeah. like uh, so much of my um, life has been about processing that as a performer. Mm-hmm. And so um, for doing that for like 35 years. And, and so wow. now like not having that is very strange. Fair, yeah, I bet. Um, which is probably why, you know, podcasting and that sort of thing is nice to feel some sort of sense of like talking things through in a way. Do yes. you ha- do you have anyone? Well, first of all, what's like your relationship with social media? Do you hate it? Do you uh, tolerate it? Do you love it? I like it. I mean, I think it's fun. I think it's definitely interesting. It's something mm-hmm. that is there and it's something that is funny. And I, I definitely I fuck with it. Like I engage yeah. <laughs> with it and I like it. Um, it's new still in my mind, even though it's been around for a long time. Yeah. It's still like in my mind, it's still like a new thing, which is it's not, but Mm -hmm. it's like anything in the last 20 years in my mind is still like new, which is such a dumb, um, kind of old person thought, (laughs) but it is definitely like, uh, newfangled, but I, I know that, um, it's all that sort of we have right now, which Mm -hmm. is good. I mean, at least we have that, at least that's in existence. So I'm, I'm grateful for it for sure. Is there anyone that you follow that you are obsessed with? Any recommendations that people should be checking in on? I like, um, I always love a Billy Eichner and I always like, um, uh, I'm, I was so excited about Liam Sullivan, who is an old friend of mine who yes, put out masks. masks. Uh, oh, I, and you're in the video for it. Yeah. I loved, um, shoes. Yeah. I, uh, I love, I, I always loved his older videos. We did a show together in New York many, many years ago. And so he was in it with shoes with Kelly. And, and so it was great to see and, uh, and do masks with him. And then, and then, um, so I love that. I love, um, I love Cardi B and Megan the Stallion and I love mm. all of those like the TikTok WAP um challenge video. Oh, yeah. I love like TikTok like dance challenge and then I'm like should I do that and I'm like I don't think my knees can handle it. Like I'm not, I don't want to go have like you know yeah. um, <laughs> for me wanna, like that's just, just like, a my ACL. I that's like, the worst thing I could do right now. Like I can't I just cannot go for orthopedic surgery right now. Like I don't want I don't just, want the most embarrassing <laughs> adult injury is one you got from trying to do a TikTok dance. I know, uh, no way, no, <laughs> no way. Um, so I can't, I can't do it. But I, uh, I, yeah, I just, and then I just like to watch like so many. I watch way too many like a dog videos. Like yeah. I watch a lot of like dog and like um, just stupid dog memes. And yeah, they're the so purest. Cute. It's really wonderful. I, I'm, I feel you. Those are the ones that I think uh, ground me a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to take one last break. When we get back, I have a bunch of questions uh, from Instagram for you. So mm-hmm. speaking of social media, we'll be right back with more Not Too Deep. Not Too Deep with Grace Helbig. Hello, listeners. Grace Helbig here. Wanting to say two things, a big thank you for listening to the podcast. Uh, If you are a regular listener, if this is your first time listening, welcome and thank you. And uh, second thing, if you are enjoying yourself here, 
in this not too deep world we've built and you'd like to leave us a review, that would be so wonderful. If you can go to the iTunes store, the app store and leave us a lovely little review comment. How are you feeling? Good, bad, otherwise? Maybe just good or otherwise would be appreciated. Other than that, enjoy the podcast. Okay, Margaret, before we get into these Instagram questions, I'm going to ask you the two questions I ask every single guest that is on the podcast. And the first is, who, alive or dead, would you most like to throw cold spaghetti at? Who, like, cold spaghetti? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think it would probably be Donald Trump. I mean, yeah. he, he should get some cold, he should step in some cold spaghetti. He should yeah. get cold spaghetti threaded through those toes. Uh, on a lighter note, the other question that I ask every single guest that's on the podcast is to tell us your worst pants shitting story or like a close call situation but you can only use three words or three small phrases. Um, so mine, for example, is college jogging front lawn. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Mine is um, Mini Cooper. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, all fruit diet, one on one freeway. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Those, uh, yeah, uh, that paints a very vivid picture, yes. <laughs> but no follow-up questions. Uh, let's get into these Instagram questions. So we got a bunch of really, really good ones. Everyone is absolutely adoring of you. Uh, someone wants to know, well, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but what's become your favorite snack during quarantine? Um, well, actually, I love um, guacamole, but made in a mm. moco tete, which is a granite bowl with <gasps> so it's like a mortar and pestle, but made of granite. Oh, never and heard of this. So it's um, crushed instead of uh, with a fork, you know, so it's I guess uh. you can do it with a fork. But if you crush it with stone, mm-hmm. then you're um, breaking apart the, the molecules. So the cell walls are they they they. Uh, taste different because Whoa. they're crushed instead of um, just broken. Okay. So when you crush the cellulose, it breaks apart differently on your tongue. So wow. all of the cell walls are, um, it, it's, it's like the, the water molecules are, it's, I'm saying it wrong, but the cellulose is broken up differently. So it breaks okay. up differently in your mouth. That's why it's, it's great. So I wow. make it with, um, garlic and avocado and red onion which is mm-hmm. better raw yeah and corn and bacon well and, and bacon uh, oh shoot and bacon and fish sauce instead of salt really so whoa a okay. little bit of um red boat uh fish sauce which is nice. very it's it gives it a little bit of funk but not too much so it's fishy got but it it's very very good that sounds awesome i've never heard of that before very yes. cool yeah. um Someone's to know if you could hang out with one of your tattoos, which would it be? Uh, I would hang out with uh, Quan Yin, <laughs> who is on the back. She is the um, goddess of compassion. Ooh. And she is on the uh, she, she's the Buddhist goddess of compassion. She's on the back of my uh, left calf. Cool. And she's. Um, a work in progress. She's not finished, but she's really beautiful. And, um, she's always, she's always, she's got my back. She's on my left leg. She's always, That's she's awesome. There. I love that. Uh, someone wants yeah. to know genuine life advice or what you wish you knew 20 years ago. Um, that it, nothing's that bad. Nothing's that big of a deal. Mm. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. I, and mm. also, um, uh, that I bought, like I worry so much about stuff yeah. and, um, uh, the worst, the, 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 the worst thing I've ever been through never happened. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So it's like, you always like put yourself through so much shit. Yeah. It's just you doing it. It's like, wow. I always worry so much and it's really just me. Ah, that's really helpful. I think that, yeah, we're so stuck in our heads that being able to zoom out a little bit and like see mm-hmm. things as they are is, is hard to do, but very helpful. Yeah. Uh, Emmy wants to know, what do you think the next steps are for Asian American representation? Well, I think it's really like that we're just going to see and feel and hear um, more Asian American stories. And mm-hmm. we need that. We need to see and hear and 
feel and tell our stories and um, see them on the screen, see them on the television, see them in the books, see them in the you know movies, we just see them and, and hear them in podcasts and yeah. everywhere we can see them and hear them and tell them, you know, they've got to come out. Mm-hmm. And um, that's the next step is to be there to witness them, see them, tell them, hear them, all that. Um, cool. So be audience, be the teller, be the watcher, be the uh, actor, be all of that, all hmm. of it. Be Very the cool. author. Very cool. Uh, Kellan says, I love her content. I wish she would start a vlog and do more music video collabs, please. Do you have any plans for upcoming more like internet centric content or more music collabs? <laughs> I would love to. I would love to. I have um, been writing more music and I have been um, doing other stuff. I'm actually going in to start a movie in a couple of weeks Ooh, in, cool. um, in New York. And so I'm going into quarantine for that. So hopefully uh, maybe when I come out of that, I'll do more. Nice. Uh, and it's maybe nice to have a specific reason to quarantine. Yes, it's <laughs> good. Knowing that there's a goal. Uh, favorite comedy special at the moment? Favorite comedy special? I think um, I really love, well, I always love uh, uh, Ali Wong's um, Baby Cobra. Mm-hmm. I think that's like probably my favorite. Very cool. That's so, so great. I want to see one from uh, Bobby Lee too. Bobby Lee is so funny all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, I really love. I really love Ali Wong. Just everything. Ali uh, Wong. Uh, agree. Uh, Rebby wants to know what's something you wish more people knew you for or as. Um, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I guess my activism, because I've always mm-hmm. wanted to work more as like um, an activist within the LGBTQI plus community and mm-hmm. also uh, working um, to combat the experience of uh, people experience experiencing homelessness and mm. help people um, to get out of the experience of homelessness and um yeah. you know that kind of stuff you know i've worked around that a long time so um cool. hoping that uh receives more um traction but you know it's also that thing of like you don't want to like um say hey i do right. this <laughs> right 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 it's like yeah you don't want to uh be misinterpreted for helping for the wrong reasons but you also want to be helpful <laughs> I want to be helpful, but only just because I want more people to like do it too. Yeah. Just so like, I want more people to be like, Hey, th- this is something that we should all do. Um, not so that people are like, Oh, look at how great she is because she does that mm-hmm. more. Like I wish that more people would be like, Hey, I would like to get involved. It's more that. Yeah. Than, um, so it's kind of one of those things. Cause there's a, there's a sort of that whole thing of like that culture of like virtue signaling, which is so weird. Yeah. You know, what's so weird is like when people like, pretend to rescue animals wait this is a thing Uh oh yeah people like pretend to like rescue animals but they're actually just endangering animals and then like pretending to rescue them like this weird what? shit it's like all on like youtube and like oh, no. tiktok of like they'll like coat like ducks and like oil oh. and then like wash them and then it's like Wait, wait, why do you have <laughs> what? Oh <laughs> like, god. It's just like these weird, like shady. You can't trust things. anything now. And it, it's just like, what the fuck are you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just what? like weird. Wow. Weird things. That's uh yeah, that's very strange. That is a side of uh YouTube and TikTok that I have not ventured <laughs> no, down it's yet. Not cute. It's uh, not cute. Um okay, this is uh the last question for you, a real real light question. How to fix a life that is falling apart? Mm. Um, well, we're all falling apart and we've all fall, mm. fallen apart at some extent. And sometimes it's it's okay. I've definitely fallen apart a bunch. Mm. Um, I think that like I've 
actually, you know, allowed myself to fall apart. And I've had other people put me back together. It's not Mm -hmm. always the case. Sometimes Mm -hmm. we have to fall apart in order to be put back together. I think it's more like what is the extent of falling apart and what is like the point of of uh, falling apart for you. Mm -hmm. And some it's it's more like what do we need? Like what is it? What is it that we need to not fall apart? Or what? Like usually when we fall apart, is like do we need to fall apart? Do we need that to see what what we need to be put back together? And what's the worst thing that can happen? Um, Mm. So it's kind of like what does falling apart mean, and what does it look like? And what does it mean to lose everything? And what does it mean to gain everything back? And mm-hmm. what is everything? So it's a very existential kind of question. Yeah. Um, but it's really, it is okay to fall apart sometimes. And it's actually I, sometimes essential. Yeah. And I, I like a lot of times, um, I think like kind of what you're saying that I think people are are hesitant about it because they think it's a bad thing thing. They think it's, you know, something that shouldn't happen. But I feel like I relate most with the people that are that have gone through a falling apart stage in their life. And if you think about people that have never experienced that, they seem like serial killers in a way. Yeah. Yes. Only had a very like straight linear path feels um, a little unrealistic in a sense. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of like if um, it's like, what do you define as falling apart? Like mm-hmm. I have been, um, you know, taken out of my, uh, home and put in an institution that's pretty much falling apart. Like mm-hmm. I was like taken out, um, in an intervention and given a mm-hmm. choice of you can either, um, lose all of your friends and family and uh, continue your life as you are, or you can be put in this institution. And then I was placed there for a year and a half. And that was really like my falling apart. Yeah. So that's kind of, you know, that's the, I've been fired. I've been um, canceled, Mm. quote unquote canceled. I've been like, there's like lots of things, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, when you reach those stages, it's like, is that falling apart? I think so. Yeah. And it's like, you, you know, you survive it. Mm-hmm. So it depends on like, what is, what is sort of their definition? So, and you, you know, you get stronger and you get better. And so I'm glad I experienced that. And I think that you have to, in order to grow up. So mm-hmm. I think it's the, the choice is like, let's not be afraid of it and let's just go through it. You have the only way out is through. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very true. I love that. Uh, and I think like you said earlier, a little bit, the, what is the worst possible thing? And like really trying to kind of get yourself to really think about what's the worst possible thing, what's the worst possible thing. And a lot of times it's like what you're saying to yourself rather than the reality of the situation Um, and being able to figure out, like you said, why are you falling apart? Like what is there to gain after you fall apart? Like what is the reason for this? Uh, Mm -hmm. I I think it's really important. That's very helpful, Margaret. Thank you so much. Thank Um, you. Before we wrap up completely, usually, (laughs) hey little girl, uh, usually we uh, give a personalized fortune cookie from us to our guests when we're doing this in person. But because we're doing this virtually, we have a virtual fortune cookie for you that I believe Melissa has emailed to you. Oh, yes. Uh, the new Bay Bridge linking East Bay to SF took like 11 years to make and over $6 billion, including the increased toll fares. But guess what? It's going to rust soon and need to be rebuilt. <laughs> this type of situation may be applicable to many parts of life for an American in 2020. So that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, a bit of a journey to get there, but we got there. <laughs> it's true. I, yeah. that, that bridge was so annoying too, because it took forever. I mean, it was so, it, and I couldn't believe how much it really affected um, the commutes. And it yeah. was crazy. It was crazy, but yeah, that's how it goes. 2020. Uh, Margaret, where can people find you and everything that you are up to if they don't already know? People can find me um, at Margaret Cho on Twitter, at Margaret underscore Cho on the Instagram. They can find me um, uh, margaretcho.com online. And um, yeah, I'll be back on tour when this whole thing is over. Heck yeah. Um, 
Yeah. So and thank you. have your, you. your podcast going on that people can oh, listen to? It's called the, uh, the Margaret Show. It's on anywhere you can listen to podcasts. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys. Go check out everything that she's up to. Also, the dog content is 100%. So you won't yes. be upset. Um, we'll see you guys next time on another episode of Not Too Deep. Goodbye. Too deep. Too deep. Too deep. Not too deep. Not too deep. Grace Helbig. Not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated. Producer Melissa D. Montz. Edited by Shireen Lani Yunus. Post-production sound by Chris Henry and an extra special thanks to Flula for the theme music. <laughs> <laughs>